Morning, sir. Morning, morning. Good morning. Morning. Glad to see everybody here this morning. Uh, it's the board's practice that prior to the commencement of our board meeting, uh, before calling the meeting, meeting to order, a prayer be given. The board member who delivers the prayer may make reference to his or her own religious faith just as you might refer to yours when offering a prayer. We wish to emphasize, however, that members of all religious faiths are welcome not only in these meetings, but in our community <coughs> as well. The participation of all citizens in the process of self-government will help our Board of Supervisors to better serve the good people of Mecklenburg County. And I'll ask Ms. Lundy if she would lead us in prayer. Good morning. Let us bow our heads for implication. Most holy and everlasting Father, it is again that we come to give you thanks for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us down through the years and to this present moment. We thank you for food, shelter, and for a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you for the air that we breathe that many of us take for granted. We also thank you for family and friends that mean so much to each of us. We just thank you for letting us see just another day and for your grace and your mercy. Now as we prepare to convene this meeting, I pray that you grant us your divine wisdom and guidance as we attack each agenda item. I pray that our decisions will be for the betterment of this county and for the citizens that we serve. This we ask in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> At this time, I will call this meeting of the Mecklenburg County Board of Supervisors to order. A couple of things. Um, please uh, turn off your cell phones or mute those, and I need to do my own. <coughs> we don't have those interruptions <coughs> in our meeting. Hang on here. Let me get that little button. <laughs> I don't know if it's turned off or not, but anyway. Um, also, I uh, want to remind you to, uh, we still have the sign-up sheet, right, Mr. Carter, for the public comments? Yeah, make sure if, uh, for public comments that you uh, sign up uh, on the sheet in the back there, and uh, we uh, certainly encourage you to uh, speak to us about any matters of concern you have uh, with, concerning our county, and we give you three-minute three uh, time frame to do that. And um, So at this time, I would ask that you please stand for our pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. What would you have in your packet the uh, minutes of the September 13th uh, meeting? If there are no corrections to those minutes, Chair would entertain a motion to approve them. Chair, my motion to approve the September 13th minutes of presented. Motion to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. On the agenda, we do need to add uh, one item under closed session, item number two. Uh, real estate. That's the only correction and audition change that I have. Anyone else have any other uh, additions or, or deletions to the agenda? If not, we need a motion to adopt the agenda as amended. So move, Mr. Chairman. A motion to adopt amended agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 So, thank you. All right, our first order of business is our public comment session. Mr. Carter, if you got. Uh, Constant Hammond. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to have him go ahead and y'all can pass those around so that Lori 
y'all will be able to understand a little more what she's going to be talking about. But my name is Constance Hammond, and I really appreciate y'all having us here today so that we can share with y'all about impact mission camps. They're going to be coming here in June of 22. Um, and they'll be here for about a week. Impact Missions Camps, the purpose of it is to help a lot of teenagers and adult volunteers will come into the area, and we are there to improve homes, roofs, windows, painting, um, making decks, ramps for handicapped people to be able to come up and back off the houses and all. Um, the daily experience for these children is they'll wake up in the morning, they'll have breakfast, then they go and they have a worship service. Then after the worship service, they break up into groups of anywhere from 8 to 15 students in these teams. These teams go to these homes that are <coughs> people in need that are unable to afford to fix their own homes or are handicapped or such. <coughs> and so these children have the opportunity to talk with these homeowners, get to know them, they they share love with them, they develop relationships with them, and they spend the entire week at these people's homes working all day long. The children get to go home with the experience of this love that they share and getting to know people and also the relationship with God that they develop. But they also go back to their own churches and outside communities and take their experience back with them, and they share that when they go home. They start up other programs when they go home that help their communities in building homes or, or refurbishing homes for people. Um, after the workday, then they all go back to the school or wherever we're going to be staying at the moment. Um, they go back there, they have their dinner, then they have worship time again. They have group time with their counselors that they come from their own churches, and then they hang out, and then at the last night, everybody comes together. All the fam, all the families that you help, they all come together, and you <clears throat> worship together. You have a big dinner together. It's like a street party type thing that you experience with them. But all these children are coming in from all these areas, and we're fixing to have several hundred students and volunteers come into the area. Um, I really hope that we could get y'all to back us on this and, and see the joy and the love and the passion that we've had in it. And I know Lori and I have been involved with it for over 15 years, both of our entire families. This isn't something that we're just doing one time. We do this every year. But praise God, it's coming to Mecklenburg for the first time in 25 years or 27 years, I think is how long Impact's been going on. So praise God, it's coming here. We got help. And I hope that y'all enjoy listening to what she has to say. She'll take care of business portions of it. But thank you. Thank you. And next is Lori Wright. Good morning. Morning. Um, I'm Lori Wright. I'm the team leader for Impact Mecklenburg. I've chaperoned um, our church's children um, and youth to um, impact camps across Virginia for 13 of the past 15 years. And we've gone to places like Danville, Martinsville, Chesterfield, Culpeper, and the Eastern Shore, and even Alexandria. Um, during every camp, I've always longed for impact to come home, to come to Mecklenburg County. And over the years, the relationships I've built with the Baptist General Assembly of Virginia, I've learned what it takes to make a local impact happen. Um, it takes a lot of prayers, continuous prayers, and community support. We cannot do this without the entire community backing us up. Um, over the next nine months of organizing Impact Mecklenburg, we will bring together churches, civic organizations, government, businesses and individuals from all across the county. We will be promoting a team mindset. Um, my hope is that up to 20 homeowners will receive assistance from a new wheelchair ramp, a repaired deck, or even a new roof. These homeowners are on the margins of our society and among the overlooked in our county. Not only will they be helped but lasting relationships will be formed with them. <clears throat> An estimated 150 teenagers, along with their adult leaders from churches across Virginia, will descend upon Mecklenburg County for one week this summer. The dates are on your sheet that was handed <clears throat> up. 
They will learn some building skills, but even better, they will learn what it feels like to help people, a skill that this world needs more of. Mecklenburg County has already offered to help. Um, we will be housing the camp this summer at Parkview High School. Um, and these repair projects are, um, just so y'all know, these repair projects are offered at no cost to the homeowners. The Impact Mecklenburg Committee will be raising significant funds. We all know the cost of building repairs these days. Um, and hopefully receiving some in-kind gifts to make this camp a success. And my ask is, is would the supervisors consider raise, um, offsetting or waiving the cost of any building permits and inspection fees that we might need to incur? In any way y'all can think of to partner with us to help make this camp a reality would be greatly appreciated. I look forward to working with y'all and hearing from you guys in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next I have Miles Tisa. Good morning. My first time being here, so... Uh, my name is Miles Teasdale. I'm a Mecklenburg County resident. I live out off Paschal Road. We've got three HOAs down there, y'all are aware. Peat Farm, Marymount, and Granite Hall Shores. I've been asked to come collect some information and disseminate it to the HOAs. They got two things that uh, they're of interest right now. Uh, we got a letter from Ed Taylor on the 20, dated the 24th of September about how our vehicle tax rates, property rates are going to increase due to COVID anywhere from 10 to 40% above what it has been. And he expects that continue for 18 months. The question that I was getting is why did he use the full clean loan value, which is full retail to figure those increases because you guys are going to get a windfill, windfall of taxes. They could have used the NADA, J.D. Power NADA trade-in value to save up to 15 or 20 percent off the increase of the expected taxes. I was also informed that uh, the board had established a rainy day escrow fund for that windfall of, of taxes money that's gonna come in. Question is, how are you gonna spend it? Are you gonna earmark it? Are you gonna put it back in the general fund, buy new furniture, or are you gonna use it for something that the public has input? <clears throat> uh, the HOAs are also asking about waterfront versus non-waterfront millage rates. Are there separate millage rates? If so, is that equitable? Property taxes should be based on the value of the property. Nobody says that they won't pay ta taxes, but if you got one property that's worth $300,000, it's on the lakefront, the other's right across the street, same neighborhood, are the tax rates, millage rates different? Uh, I'm gonna go back, disseminate the information. If you folks could possibly make time for the November and December meetings. Uh, so 25 or 50 people can show up. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Okay. We got Angelica. Oh, yes, that's right. Angelica Reyes has sent hers in. She would have come, but because of COVID <laughs> restrictions, she sent hers in. Uh, so Jenny's actually going to do it. Judy's going to speak. Okay, you ready? She asked me to read this presentation. Literacy Interactives is a 501c3 nonprofit organization founded in 2008 and based in Mecklenburg County. We promote the meaning of interactive literacies because literacy is more than reading a newspaper or a book in today's world. Reflecting the advocacy of diversity and inclusion through literacy in action. Literacy Interactives sponsors the Parker Sidner Historic Log Cabin site located in Clarksville. 
we request funding from the county in the amount of $50,000 for the stabilization and beginning rehabilitation of this historic pre-Civil War log cabin situated on 4.41 acres. The structure is the original standing log cabin that housed enslaved African Americans on Presswood Plantation. Belonging to the nonprofit, the log cabin represents resilience, achievement, education, women's rights, civil rights, and now a place that will invite everyone to be a part of moving forward with new kinds of mutual achievements for inclusive development and capacity building. The pre-Civil War cabin structure requires urgent stabilization work. Stabilization will prepare the next steps for overall rehabilitation. The historic site will be open to the public as a lively tourist attraction and as a vibrant place for intergenerational and interracial programs benefiting Mecklenburg County. To date, there is no antebellum historic site open to the public that distinguished the progressive representation of American, African Americans in Mecklenburg County through their cultural heritage and historical presence. The Parker Sidner Living History site will be a dynamic first of its kind, serving the county as an economic development initiative based on the interactive connections of historic preservation for the community. Listed on the prestigious National Register of Historic Places and the Virginia Landmarks Reg Register with a Virginia State Historical Highway marker, the overall rehabilitation of the Sidner Place will contribute to the economic development efforts among existing successful enterprises in the county. Economic development enables positive community building resulting from inclusion and diversity in the county. The project will contribute to equity-driven outcomes that will benefit the county as an esteemed and model community. Thank you. And what's it called again, Judy? What's it? <clears throat> it is called the Literacy Interact Interactives. <clears throat> Literacy Interact Interactive. Mm -hmm. And this was written by Angelita D. Reyes. Reyes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything? Is that it, Mr. Carr? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Um, we have a couple of public hearings uh, to consider this morning. The first one is uh, proposed conveyance of easement Nokava subdivision. Mr. Slayton? Um, yes, sir. This may sound familiar to you. Folks have acted on easement requests like this in the past and once quite recently. But just to refresh your memory, uh, when roads and private roads and subdivisions are on a recorded approved plan, that causes ownership of those roads to transfer from the subdivision of the developer to the county. The county's ownership does not carry with it the responsibility of maintenance, but it does carry ownership. The Norcorva subdivision in Mecklenburg County adjoins the North Carolina state line, and specifically Warren County, North Carolina. At the Warren County, North Carolina line, there's a water distribution system. Residents of Norcorva have in the past and, and in the present wanted to connect to that line to have a source of water to their lots rather than uh, to build wells. Uh, the application or the request today is before you by Andy Pegram who owns lot 27. He's asking for an easement uh, to put underground water lines from the North Carolina line first north and then east to his lot. I will repeat you, this is action you have, you've taken favorably in the past and, and uh, Mr. Pegram is requesting that you do so in his instance. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, any questions of Mr. Sladen? At this time, I will open the public hearing to consider the uh, conveyance of the easement in Norcava subdivision. Anyone wishing to speak to this matter, please come forward at this time. Seeing no one, I declare the public hearing is closed. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion that we uh, accept the request of the proposed conveyance of easement. Okay. We have a uh, motion to uh, approve this conveyance of, uh, conveyance of easement. Any discussion on that matter? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you. Next is a special exception permit application uh, by Michael uh, Elliott. Uh, Mr. Hendrick, you handling that? Yes, sir. Okay. You have an application by Michael Z. Elliott, Elliott Family Enterprise, LLC for a special exception permit to allow for a Christmas light show, Santa experience, 
agriculture experiences with overnight camping, four sites, and other special events. This property identified as county tax number 06000-11-002 and 04200-06-01 zone agricultural is located at the end of Highway 652 Callis Road, approximately one mile north of its intersection with Highway 861 Pinecone Road. South Hill District, Election District 4, County of Mecklenburg, Reference D Book LR-9-5138 and LR-6-7123. Thank you. Anyone here representing Mr. Elliott that wishes to speak before we go to public hearing? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So my name is Zeb Elliott. I'm Michael Elliott. I go by Zeb. Um, and I'm the, the owner of Elliott Family Enterprises, LLC, and I operate the, um, the light show at the end of Callis Road. I believe many of you have been to my light show, uh, and it has grown over the years. I've been doing it since 2015, uh, and last year in 2020, when I think we all need it the most, I made it the biggest ever. And we had about 20,000 people that joined us over the course, starting in November through the end of January when I ran it. Uh, the light show continues to grow, but everybody knows that inflation has become a big thing lately and the cost of the technology that we procure and use in the light show has increased significantly. And while I fund the light show out of my own pocket, uh, it has become rather costly to continue to grow and expand it. So in wanting to continue to spread joy and happiness and love throughout the community, um, and, and I believe Christmas is the best way to do that. I, I've brainstormed and I found a way to um, help the light show pay for itself and be a sustaining um, enterprise. Uh, the light show itself will always remain free. There's never going to be a cost to attend the um, light show I do at my residential home. But I spoke to my wife and we came up that, hey, we, we live on a, a family farm. Is something that we feel that we could contribute and grow within the community. Uh, so we found uh, what's called uh, hipcamp.com. And if you've ever used Airbnb where you can rent someone's home uh, and, and pay a fee through a website, uh, Hip Camp is the same way. And we invite families. Uh, they can come in and they book on a website. I accept the booking, meaning if I feel like they're not going to be a good fit for our farm or they may... Um, be not uh, family oriented, uh, we can deny that booking and not allow that to continue. Uh, so they come in, they enjoy our pool, they enjoy the pond, they enjoy camping. It is an open field camping right next to our pond, so the woods are at least 80 to 100 feet away. Uh, for the fires, which I know is a liability risk, uh, we've done our best to mitigate that risk and the actions that we've taken there. Number one, we have a liability policy. Uh, we've offered all of our neighbors who have risk for that to be added to our liability policy. Uh, and this is a commercial liability policy. This isn't a, a residential liability policy. Uh, it's all done in our Elliott Family Enterprises LLC um, title. We have also have liability insurance through hipcamp.com. We, for the fire pits, uh, there is only one dugout fire pit uh, that's in an, it's dugout. There's, there's earth all the way around it. It's rocked, uh, and it is at least 100 feet away from any open um, wooded areas. We also do uh, mats, fire mats, for any portable campfires, for any trailers, camping trailers that people bring out to the, to the area, uh, and they're given a fire extinguisher. The last mitigating risk that I do for that is I don't accept any bookings when I'm not going to personally be at home. So this is right adjacent to my home. I have some I have some stake in this game, right? It's not something that I'm just owning a piece of property off to uh, off in the middle of nowhere and I'm letting people come and camp. It's not that. It's directly adjacent to my home. I or my wife are at home at all times when we have campers. Uh, we do have security cameras around our farm to to mitigate and deter any um, any criminal activity or unsavory activity around the area, uh, and we keep it well lit at night as well. So we're mainly about <coughs> families coming out, spending time together, um, being able to, to do things and continue to grow and, and, and spread that love and joy. We're also doing a magical Santa experience this year on the farm. 
through our Christmas greenhouse. That is a ticketed event. Uh, we are selling tickets for that. Uh, and that's an entire indoor light show in Santa experience where families can come out uh, and they can experience Ms. Claus, elves, Santa's photography, an indoor light show, and Santa storytelling. Uh, and that's a, an event that will be running through uh, November through the um, middle of December. So we're hoping that the ticket sales from that go to cover the cost of our light show in addition to the camping and allow us to continue to grow and sustain it over the long term. Okay. Any questions? Right, any questions? I think so. All right, thank you. All right, at this time. Uh, I'd like to speak to. Yes, ma'am. Permit. I would like to speak to that for a minute. District 4 is my district. I live on Whittles Mill Road, but I also have land on Bridge Road. <clears throat> I go along with the voting for the light show. It's beautiful. I have been there. I've taken family members there. The greenhouse, I'm sure it's going to be equally as well as the light show. I will not vote for camping because we have other camping sites in Mecklenburg County. When you're booking people from everywhere coming to camp, you're bringing everything with it, all the negative things that come with it, along with fire that may be set. And we don't need a camping site in a residential zoned area. I have had an encounter on Bridge Road with a second cousin coming out of state, setting up a campsite across from someone else's house across the road on Bridge Road, like going into Whittles Mill. And no time fire was everywhere. <clears throat> I had to call his mother, who is my second cousin, that lives in Norfolk, to find out what to do with this, you know. So that's why I oppose having the campsite. We have enough campsites in McMurray. We don't need camping in a residential zone area. But I will go along with the light show in the greenhouse. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, at this time, I will open the public hearing to consider the special exception permit uh, that you've just heard outlined and discussed. Anyone wishing to speak to this matter, please come forward at this time. I right, seeing no one, I declare the public hearing to be closed. What's the pleasure of the board? And this was, um, a unanimous recommendation by the Planning Commission. What district Which is district? that? My district. Mr. So Chairman, I'll make a motion that we accept this application as is. Okay. We have a motion to accept, approve the application. Any further discussion on the motion? Will you be monitoring uh, these these campsites, uh, like making sure people don't go out there when there's a forty mile an hour wind and try to build a? Oh, at camp, camp, camp uh huh. So the way it works um, with the camp.com, you can actually go to the Mecklenburg County Fire Department website, and they have all the campsites that they have listed for if there is wind or anything that um, happens. I can issue a fire ban on camping. And when campers show up, I meet them personally, and I tell them what they're allowed to do and not allowed to do. I actually show them the property line. <coughs> I show them where they can go, where they can't go. Uh, and if it's windy or it's dry, like we do get dry periods here in Mecklenburg County, I don't allow fire. Um, and I will actually remove the fire pits from the area. And if I catch them doing fire, I ask them, I put it out and ask them to leave. I've never had that issue, and uh, hip camp is pretty, pretty well known. You get to rate the campers. Other other hosts rate campers as well as campers rating the host. So in that I get to accept campers that have high ratings and I get to deny campers that have caused trouble in the past. So it's not that anybody can just show up and do whatever they want. Um, it is a, you're greeted, you're shown where your camp spot is, you're told the rules. Uh, if it is dry, if it is um, in a fire ban season, when the county has a fire ban out, then there are no fires allowed. And so, so a very controlled environment. Yeah, extremely controlled. And uh, it's only on the weekends. The maximum stay is two nights. Uh, and I only do it when I'm at home. So it's, it's mm -hmm. very much a, a mm -hmm. highly controlled environment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and it's, on, it's on 32 acres. Uh, but, you know, is this second X on this map where that would be located? 
Uh, I'm not sure what math you're. You're looking at the 36433. Yeah. You see the house in the center there. There's a uh, um, a little less than an acre pond to the right of that, and that's where the, the camping will be. It's right beside the, the pond area. Back behind where your house is. Basically. Directly to the side where my house Inside. is. So it, it's it's a pretty good distance from any forested area, and I keep it that way. I keep the grass cut. I keep it mowed um, because in the end, I've got a lot of liability and risk here too. So it, I have a, a very vested interest to make sure that people behave themselves, and I, I don't have that exposure. Okay, one more question. If this is a, a residential zone, residential? Is camp is supposed to be there? I don't know that it's zoned residential. It's not it's zoned red agriculture. It's probably agriculture. agriculture. It's zoned yes, ma'am. I thought it was residential, too. It's zoned A, correct, Robert? Yes. The whole area on Callis Road down there. 32 is acres a. is yes, agriculture. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay, this question. is part. What is your maximum capacity or campus I would, at any, any given time? I've never had more than um, six people there at any one time. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, at the Planning Commission, we, we asked pretty much all these same questions and all, and it seems to me that he's going to do a, a very good job of monitoring it and say, you know, he said he you're not even going to have campers or anything there if he's not there. So he, he monitor, And then he's handing there to file to extinguish each person and all, and he, he gets to control who comes there. So right. we were, well, what he gave us, we were pretty convinced that he was going to do a good job of that. All right. Any other discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. Uh, opposed? No. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have uh, Beth Englehorn with Southside Behavioral Health. Welcome, Beth. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, hope you all are doing well this morning. Um, Southside is here this morning to request your assistance. We are applying for a $100,000 um, which has a matching amount of 45%, which means the USDA will give us 55,000 and we're asking for 45,000 from the localities. Um, this is all being broken down the same way we break down our 10% match. Um, this grant is to do some building upgrades um, to allow us to increase our ability to do telehealth from all of our buildings. Uh, we saw during the uh, pandemic, especially in the middle of the pandemic, that our ability to do telehealth um, really did increase the, ava the, the availability of services for everybody that came to us. With transportation being a huge issue in our area, um, it really did increase access for people who needed services um, to be able to provide telehealth. Our buildings, many of them are over 20 years old, there's wiring on top of wiring in many of our buildings, and they're not set up for um, not set up to be able to provide telehealth in, in the most um, economic way. Um, we have um, gotten other grants to get fiber to our buildings, so we have the necessary fiber at our buildings, but we are we need to upgrade our wiring in order to be able to to produce telehealth in the way that we um, need to be able to do it. Um, we've gotten a uh, commitment from Halifax of 19350 and from Brunswick for 6750 and we're asking Mecklenburg for 18900 in order to be able to obtain this grant from the USDA. We will not be seeking the funds if we are not awarded the grant. This, is, this would be a commitment from you to give us the funds should the grant be awarded to us. Mr. Carter, you had it. I believe they want to go into the existing building on Mecklenburg Avenue. Mecklenburg Avenue and also our buildings down the street. And, and go into that one, especially uh, gut that. Uh, we would be able to use ARPA funds for this, uh, so we can use that. So it wouldn't be any local funds that you would have to appropriate, but we would have to appropriate those if they're granted that at the end of the year with other ARPA funds. Is that, do we need to take that through the budget committee? Uh, that's up to you all. When, when, when is this, when is the grant due? The grant is due October the 12th. Yes. 
Uh, but you can submit the grant yeah. anywhere yeah. after that. Um, as long as they have funds, they will allow you to submit the application. This is a rather small application in comparison to what other people ask for from the USDA. So it is, um, we're hoping we'll be able to get this. Okay, uh, board, so. Um, I can put that in the have a motion. A motion that mm -hmm. we will grant the behavior health for this $18,000 for Mecklenburg County Share. Okay, we have a motion to um, appropriate $18,900 as a uh, matching share for the uh, behavioral health grant. Um, any discussion on that motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and, and Beth has to come to, to the board to present the entire board, which is what she had done at the other county, so that's why we sent it this way. Okay. And the fact that we weren't also appropriating local funds, we were going to use our federal funds to match. Okay. All right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, school update. Uh, our superintendent with us this morning. Mr. Nichols, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Wayne, members of the board. I'm very pleased this, this month to have uh, one of our Skanska representatives with us uh, who is going to be going through it with you. He typically comes to our school board meetings and is much more thorough than I may be able to be because he's there every day. And he's here with us now, so I'm going to ask Vince if he would just go through this with you, and then we'll ask questions after. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Members. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Vincent Maresca. I'm a project manager with Skanska, and we are your construction managers and your oversight on this project. Uh, for the overview of what we're going to be talking about, uh, just a little bit about the construction the schedule, where we're sitting on the budget, and I have some good photos also to show you. Current progress, uh, areas A and D, that would be the front of the building and the middle school side. The steel for the roof deck is now complete, so we're actually installing the actual roof itself now. Uh, the steel for auditorium catwalk, that's being completed right now. And as soon as we get that on, we'll be able to uh, finish up buttoning up our roof on top of the auditorium, and that is the last section of roofing that we have on the project. MEP, fire suppression, et cetera, they're all ongoing throughout. Uh, we've started in the northern middle school gym and wagon wheeled our way clockwise around the project. Right now, we're in the very front of the building uh, and coming into the high school side with a lot of that. Uh, structural steel is about 95% com complete. As I said, uh, uh, the auditorium is our last little piece of that to button up. The curtain wall installation, that's nearing completion in the north end of the cafeterias. Both sides of that are going simultaneously. We also have a bunch of windows or glazing, as we call it, going in all around the building. Uh, we've actually come through the middle school, and we're probably about halfway done with the windows now. Uh, force main, that four mile force main, that's nearing completion. Uh, all the piping is in place, back filled, it's, it's uh, seated, everything looks good there. Uh, we're just installing the pump house itself and the screening system for that on site. Uh, the middle school concessions interior build out is underway. That's an intricate part of it. It's got a lot of finishes and details, so that's underway. Uh, athletic fields, they're under, their middle school is all but done. The high school is now being constructed. We've actually started installing the artificial turf field right now, the subgrade for that. Uh, the west end parking lot, that's underway, and the bus loop canopy steel on the north end, that's also underway. Our final completion date, that has not changed since we started. It's still at 1 August 2022. Uh, upcoming dates, we're pouring those high school bus canopy footers on, on the 21st. Uh, we ex anticipate completing that lift station pump house on that next week also. Uh, slab on grade for the high school field house, that, will, that should be going in on the 29th. Auditorium overhead mechanical piping, there's a lot of duct work, giant duct work in your auditoriums, obviously. That should be done that week also. And right now we're anticipating dry-in of the entire main building before Thanksgiving. Our construction budget is sitting at 110 million, 539, 212. The owner direct purchase project process, which I oversee, 
Uh, we're, we just purchased everything for the athletic fields, the sod, lighting, turf, synthetic track equipment, materials, those types of things. And we're currently working on purchase orders for your bleach work, bleachers, casework, and your gym flooring. Those are, you'll also see some good return on that. Here's an aerial view of the site. This is probably from a few weeks ago, but it's pretty close to how it is, sits today. You can see on the northern part, we have started constructing everything as far as the fields go. And on the bottom right there, that will be your, or the, the field, four fields in the northern side, those are the high school fields. The bottom right field there is your uh, synthetic turf football field. It's just a closer overview of the site. You can see how we've progressed at the top left, that roof and everything is all nice and buttoned up. And as you go down a wagon wheel around clockwise, you can see how we're progressing through the site. And this was probably a few weeks ago, like I said, but this is a good example of how we do this. Well, we install the decking, then we get the sheathing, and then the metal roof panels go on top of that. This was the air, uh, middle school classrooms. You can see this, the roof trusses are in place there, and they're starting to install the steel decking. Uh, as it sits today, all of that is completed with the steel decking. These are the north end curtain walls of the cafeteria that I was telling you about. They are all but complete right now. We just need to put in some more pieces of metal on the trim caps, and that'll be dried in also. This is a skylight we've started installing in the gyms. There are about 40 of them in the project, all throughout the gyms. Uh, as you can see, we've also got paint going on in there that's all done, and it's coming together in there very fast. This is a high school quarter, but it's typical of all, most of the quarters that are being finished up right now. As you can see, you have your cable tray that's already being installed for your, for your IT. We have windows installed, we have paint going on, and we've got general cleanup happening and getting ready to start polishing floors in there. This is your high school field football, football field. Uh, that's the subgrade that we've cut down to. There's a drainage ditch around the curb, and that is your stone going down that'll be compacted and that's what everything sits on top of. And I believe that is it. Are there any questions? Before we, before we go back, if you will, the, the biggest question that I tip, still have, or that I have right now, is well, what is the color of the roof gonna be? Because we see three different colors. There's the silver at the bottom, then you see red on it, and then there's a darker color on top of that. The darker color, that which you saw in the very back, is the, when you see that, that part of the roof is, is complete. Um, so, I thought you were trying to match it up with Big Fork up at the corner up there. <laughs> 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 big Fork. We do everything we can. <laughs> 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 so, the, the main things I know people are interested in is at this point we are still on budget and on time. So I was asked the other day and I... Uh, I, could, I couldn't, wasn't quite sure how to answer the question, w was about it, are we using artificial turf for all the athletic fields? No. The artificial turf is only going on the high school athletic facility. That's typically thought of as the football field, but it's count be, it will be used for football, for soccer, and then the high school track area is also in that area with the artificial turf. All of the other fields are natural turf. That was the picture that you showed with the gravel? The, the dark that was going down, and yes. Was, you have gravel under that? Yes. <coughs> that seems kind of rough and hard, but <laughs> well, I'm but sure there's, it's the there's right another way layer. There's another layer in between yeah. the gravel and the, got the foundation. There are several layers to that system. It's, yeah. it's, it is a professional collegiate system. Okay. I, I got a call. Are you having issues with the water that's coming through with rust or something coming through the school? There, the water that has been tested so far, it's not been hooked up because it has to be tested, it has to be clean. So there has been found rust coming out of the pipes. We have met with the engineers and we've met with the town of South Hill who of course has been working directly with that. And they're working on it directly and I'm sure, so it's actually not our issue in the short term, in the long term, if we didn't have it fixed, it would be, but we have found some rust in that and we're meeting with them on that. Yes. Are they on that where it ain't causing y'all no delays or anything? Is it? 
Well, you know, it could cause some delays, but so far we, we're on top of it. Uh, Sam, all of you know, I think Sam Carroll has been our engineer and, and he met and then he called in this town of South Hill and all of their folks with water uh, are, are working on it as well. And the building inspector has informed me about it. There are some discussions of using a strainer system that just has to be cleaned out every so often. That way you get a, an ability to make sure you don't get any grits in there that can interfere with any sprinkler system. Right. So that's one of his recommendations. But that's something we don't per se. He, he can't give them a, a clean bill of health till he gets a clean flush. So as long as there's rust in there, Eddie cannot turn, allow them to hook the system up because <coughs> that about correct, right? correct. And what he said so we are aware of it uh, i know they are working on it there's some discussions going back and forth. Okay. <clears throat> okay are you having any problem with employment i see signs up hiring and hiring so are your crew still in time we're trying to find more able buys every day those, i don't know what it is uh, I, I figure it's not different than any, any other labor shortage going on today Said, well, we can get a few bodies for a few days, and then they disappear. <laughs> okay, do you anticipate that as any delay you on schedule right now? No, sir. All of our skilled trades, we do have 100% personnel on that. Okay. It's, it's our uh, daily work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Uh, I thought you were speaking to me, Mr. Spain. Yeah, we're still having a problem finding <laughs> trouble. And, and also trouble finding some students who just have never shown up. So. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mr. Nichols, as far as the bus driver situation, how is that going? Uh, well, as you know, we had to double up on the routes. That was because we had about over 40 drivers that left us. Um, that may be our most delicate population because to drive buses people typically need to be retired instead of having other jobs going on <clears throat> so we've we've doubled up on the routes it's taken some time to get those routes and still interacting between two routes coming and going and p people parents or grandparents bringing and picking students up that's always been a delicate situation um, we have had actual administrators from our schools who happen to have bus licenses, drive buses at times, but when we are quarantining, as much as we are these days, when people are impacted, that has cut us short. I think on one occasion, possibly two, we've actually had to quarantine a bus and say that parents would have to bring their children to school on that. So it's, it's tight. Do and you I, see that I, when you move into the new school, do you see that being more of an issue? Are you going to have to have more bus drivers, more buses? Uh, well, we won't need more buses. We're okay with buses at this point, albeit some of them are, are older, but we're not having to put those on the, on the route. Now, running buses twice a day as opposed to once a day or four times a day as opposed to two times a day will have an impact more on the buses that we are running. But, you're running less buses but we're running fewer. Drivers. We're running. We're running fewer buses. Right. Yeah. I just didn't know because I know a lot of parents uh, did, at Parkview Middle and Senior bring their children to school. They drive them. To a school. lot of a lot of parents bring them on all four schools, but those are their most populated schools, and so you see it hit us more there. Right. Well, and I didn't know next year if it was going to be more of an issue. Are those same parents going to drive them all the way to Route 4. We did a count of all of the schools at the secondary level, and over 300 parents per day have been, even before quarantining and issues like bringing them. So when the roadways were designed around the building, it was with that concept in place. Um, I do think we'll still have a lot of parents that will be driving, and the same number of students we anticipate will need to ride buses. Of course, they will be entirely different routes now because you're going to the center. So I, I'm still more concerned about the lack of bus drivers than most anything else. Okay. And we're, we're actively recruiting, but it's a CDL license <clears throat> with the school bus on top of it. So it takes three months. And the DMV offices that we used to be able to go anywhere to pretty much be able to work that out 
are cut back. We're having to go to Buckingham for the, those licensing now. So it takes, it takes a lot of time to be able to work that out. Is there any chance that, that you know, could look at the CDL license? I mean, you want them to have a license, but maybe not be as, you know, so much on the maintenance and stuff like that of, a, of the, you know, because these bus drivers don't have to check a lot of the brakes and all that. I would think that you got mechanics and stuff to do that. I mean, to make it a little easier, something to come up a little easier. I mean, is there any talk of anything of that? Because I'm no. sure this issue is everywhere. We, it, the issue is everywhere. Um, and, of course, we have actually had contact with our General Assembly, you know, basically saying this is a huge problem. But thus far, we've not gotten any kind of an impact or response from the Division of Motor Vehicles to say they're going to lighten up on any of the expectations. So, so you have to have a CDL now to drive a school bus? Yes, sir. Not when we, we have to have up. also an addition. We were coming up, you're 16 driving. years old, you it, could drive. It, it's, it's a CDL plus specific training for school buses, specifically for school buses. Well, I, I had. And getting a CDL right now, the fact that they've been able to go to Buckingham, regular drivers have not been able to get a CDL in over a year and a half. They will not let you sit for the test right. or drive with them. So we, we've not had people who can get even sit the CDL course in over a year, almost a year and a half. They're just opening that up now. So there's a huge backlog at DMV the whole way through on CDL side. I had, you I know, had no Chairman, idea. That needs to be reevaluated in General Assembly. They, I, I agree with David. I mean, uh, the full CDL that, you know, uh, over the road truck driver has to uh, – you know, comply with and pass shouldn't be the same one that a school bus driver. Well, well, yeah. well it is a B. Uh, when I was 18, C I had a, a bus driving license. I was driving a school bus when I was 16. Right. The A is traffic. I know that's frightening. A is <laughs> B is single action. Okay. But they they should streamline that somewhat. I, I would think it, it would have to if we could go, go forward. Maintain bus drivers. Yeah. It, it's an issue. But thank you. All right, thank you. Any, any more? All right, thank, thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay, Budget and Finance Committee report. Mr. Spain? I assume each person has a copy of the Budget Finance Report. And, mm -hmm. and before you, the Budget and Finance Committee met on Tuesday, October 12th. 2021 at scratch to 930 and put 845 in the Board of Supervisor uh, Media Room. Member President Glance of Spain, Chair Charles Jones, David Brankley, Jim Jenny, and Sterling Wilkinson. Also President Glenn Barber, Claudia London, Anna Hargrove, Tom Towner, Wayne Carter, County Administrator, Judith Shutfield, Assistant County Administrator, Ed Taylor, Commissioner of Revenue, and Samuel Langford, um, Treasurer. Chairman Call, the mean to order. The Sheriff's Department have received a check from VACO in the amount of $12,704.33 to cover the cost of the damage to a vehicle. To request a supplement of appropriation to their vehicle replacement line item from the motion of Mr. Brinkley. The committee voted unanimously to recommend a supplement appropriation of $12,774.33 to the sheriff budget. Chairman, I'd like to stop make a motion that we do make that appropriation of $12,774.33 to the sheriff um, budget. Okay. Uh, you've heard the motion. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Next, Mr. Carter, advised committee that in order to actively pursue revenue sharing funds for the Highway 58 slash Highway 882 in the section improvement project, the board need to commit to completing this project um, and um, amending the <coughs> current CIP to include the improvement. The total project uh, costs two million six hundred twenty thousand dollars. The county uh, portion being one million three hundred fifteen thousand dollars. On the motion, Mr. Jones committed voting unanimously to recommend amending the county CIP to include the revenue sharing funds 
for Highway 58 slash Highway 882 intersection improvement prior to the cost of $2,620,000. The chairman would like to start and make that informal motion. Mm -hmm. All right, you've heard that motion. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, next is uh, Mr. Shetfield stated that the county need to have a supplement appropriation for uh, $151,790 for a one time $3,000 bonus per full time sworn law enforcement officer, including $10,790 for the FICA per uh, state budget. Upon the motion on Mr. Jennings, the committee voted to approve with the county sharing coming from the ARPA, ARPA fund. And the chairman would like to put that in a formal motion. We to make this approval of the bonus three thousand, and also ten thousand for the state um, budget. You've so heard that. You've heard that motion. Any discussion on that motion? Mr. Chairman, should we make it known that what I share is of that that it's not all ours? Then when we we're not paying the whole thing. You're, you're paying uh, on this second. Uh, the sheriff's we're getting back ninety thousand uh, from the comp board because that's our thirty positions, and then we'll be paying the other fifty one thousand seven ninety. Right. I just thought the public needed to know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have thirty uh, comp board positions, and the remainder are ours. All right. Any further discussion on the motion? No, sir. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Well, there you. being no further business, the meeting was adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bay. Mr. Carter. Yes, sir. Uh, first, we had the building permit report. You can see building permits are up. As of the values and costs, it does reflection of building costs, et cetera, from a year ago. You had Manufactured homes are about $45,000 costs, and now they're up to about eighty-five. dollars uh, We did have 18 new homes last month. Uh, construction is still, the cost of building materials being up 35 to 40% has not slowed down construction at all. Uh, and then we're going wide open. So, uh, see that. Uh, fees are up. Uh, zoning administrator's report. His uh, permits are staying the same, although his ENS plans are up greatly, and that's where you're seeing the increase in his fees. Animal control uh, report, we were able to either return or adopt out approximately 85% of our animals picked up. You have the sheriff's report. You have any questions on that? Um, anything to comment on the summonses, etc.? cetera? Uh, Andy? Well, anything to comment on the summonses, etc.? cetera? Um, the heat ticketing is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the heat ticketing is in the process. So that should be um, coming um, soon, I hope. If we can get Brazos and um, Tyler to um, talk to each other and the um, General Assembly or the uh, Supreme Court, excuse me. So those will be automatically done, printed up on site by the machine. Officers don't have to try to write down any information, etc. It should be easy. Right. It's just a matter of scanning the driver's license and the registration that all gets into the computer. They um, click a couple of few buttons, and it should um, limit the time that they have a while they would stop on the side of the highway. Um, so that should ease some of that tension on, you know, I guess, with, you know, why'd you stop me? You know, how long am I going to be here? Um, and all that. Um, that should ease some of that tension um, so um, somebody can hand write that. Right, and also in the errors on that. In the errors, of course, the handwriting, being able to read them, etc. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, v dot report. I'll let him go over his. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Morning. Y'all probably got our uh, summary reports. A uh, couple things I want to go over. Uh, we started the final mowing, the cut back out on Route 58. That's full median mowing. Uh, the secondary mowing is near completion. Uh, Clarksville area is finished up. Chase City area's finished up. Still have some in Burnt Store area on the secondary. 
Uh, litter contractors picked up several routes in the Clarksville area. Uh, they started there because they got the mowing done first. Uh, as uh, Chase City's crews finished up last week, uh, they're going. We got a PO for that, and as soon as Burnt Stores crews get finished up, we've got a purchase order put in for more litter pickup there. Um, we're going. We're working with the county and the sheriff's department on supplying some message boards and cones for the upcoming fishing tournament over here at uh, Uka Kanichi. Uh, the Baskerville Wooden Bridge Road improvements are moving forward out there. Uh, we're happy to say that the 2021 Rural Rustic schedule is complete. The projects are finished. Uh, next year's schedule will consist of 699 Stanton River Road, 793 Reese's Dead End, 773 Tobacco Lane, 614 Cannons Ferry, and 680 Sweetwater Lane. So we're excited to get this those five off great. the list yeah. for next year. So. Outstanding. <laughs> An ambitious schedule. <laughs> That's all okay. I've got. Y'all have mm -hmm. any questions? If any questions? Thank you very much. Thank y'all. Y'all have a good one. One, one, Wayne, when is the tournament? Yeah, I was going to tell you. The tournament is the 20th through 23rd of this month. Okay. How do you coming Actually, here? several of your staff will be actually helping out. We'll be driving the golf carts, gators, et cetera, in the mornings to help haul the fishermen oh, back the and forth because you've got the fishing tournament. The main part is at the main Okanichi landing, but then there's a back, and they do not have nearly enough parking to get everything in. So we'll be actually hauling fishermen back and forth. Uh, so that they can get in for the way in for the uh, beginning in the afternoon. Right. They'll have another group. So, um, emergency operations plan. John has worked on this. We have to update it. Uh, it is in the packet. It is uh, long and lengthy, uh, but uh, I think it covers everything. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, I will try to answer them for you. I am subbing for John today. I read through. It, 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 it looks long. good. It 80 something pages. <laughs> yes, sir. And if you read it, it's quite long, and I did. Yeah. All right. So uh, then we. Uh, we got to have a motion to adopt. It, yeah, we need a motion to adopt the uh, uh, emergency operations plan. Some of them, Mr. Chairman. Motion to adopt. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, next 2032 review appeal. Um, there was a solar facility, 105 megawatts, that applied at uh, over between Highway 49 South down to Scotch Crossroads, uh, called Seven Bridges. Uh, the project it was unanimously recommended, it was unanimously declined by the Planning Commission for not in compliance with the comp plan. Uh, they have formally done an appeal on Friday, which Robert and I have gotten. Um, we will have to schedule a hearing for you all for that either in November or December. Russell wants to check a couple things, and we'll let you know the date after our closed session uh, when we come back into open. Okay. I think we have to do that in 60 days, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. but we want to double check. So we'll probably be in November, I mean, but that's a short week because we've only got three weeks between, so we just have to see if the December works out better. Okay. No, question. In fact, where is that located? The seven bridges. It was what was called the Mullins Family Trust Estate, uh, and it goes all the way from Highway 49, uh, past the subdivisions, all the way out to the Meharry River, and south all the way to Scott's Crossroads. It comes in on Scott's Crossroads down on that section also. It is approximately 3,000 acres, David? Robert? Three, how many? 1,600 acres all the Okay. It's 799 acres from the facility, 299 acres from the town. So about three miles northeast of Chase City. Mm -hmm. Picture that. The comp plan, the reason why it was denied by the planning commission, it was over the 500 uh, of our comp plan, and it was within two miles of Grasshopper, one and a quarter is roughly what uh, it is the distance was. So it was not in keeping the comp plan, and that's why the planning commission. Is it time to bring that up a little bit about what we talked about? Yeah. Cancer. Oh, it, it, the planning commission. Of course, this one was denied. It, like I say, it was over five hundred acres. It was um, um, one point two miles within the other one where we got two miles. And and, and on our comp plan, we we got that, and we have been pretty consistent on 
voting those down that would do that. But, you know, we, we know of other um, solar farms at the present time that are surveying and all that is happening, and then there's largest maybe um, 2,000 acres. The, the I haven't seen anything on that one yet. But, but it, it's large. It's stuff. They continue to spend money surveying, doing studies and stuff like that. So it was brought up at the Planning Commission, um, a few members, and we was going to kind of see how y'all feel is if we change this um, 500 acres, this two miles from it and all that, maybe take a look at instead of just having that as a recommendation is put it in, what is it, the law is what is? Article 20. Yeah, article. put it into Article 20. I mean, I just, it, because, you know, I think it would be fair to both parties in a way because they do this seven springs. I expect they've been working out there for three or four years surveying and doing stuff for this thing. And then they brought it up and knowing all along is that it's the comp plan says not more, more than 500 acres, what, which that's a recommendation. But right. should we change that to a thing? Because I don't think nobody really gets it. They, they keep doing the work, keep bringing them forward to us. Puts a lot of pressure on the planning commission. I can tell you that right there. So you're talking about changing the variance of, of well, no, not changing the 500 in, where it could be floating. On no, the put, put it, on, no, put it in Article 20 and plan. say this is we won't go above this. Right. So rule, not a it's a rule. Make it's it a rule. Yeah, right. it's not. A, it's a rule, not a suggestion. Right. The comp plan yeah. is a recommendation. Right. But the planning commission has been very adamant about the one mile from town two miles from another facility, not over 500 acres. Right. Uh, what they're looking at is, okay, we'll also put it into the zoning orders, which now it's law. So therefore, you know that up front. If you're more than that, it kind of takes care of it. <clears throat> Mr. Slate. Yeah, I think, um, I think this is a point. If you change it from comp plan to zoning ordinance, it's an absolute ceiling, and the application should not be submitted because the zoning ordinance does not permit it. So the zoning ordinance has considerably more bite and teeth than a comp plan recommendation was. I think your motion, if you want to pursue this, would be to refer these issues, if you want those two changes made, to the Planning Commission for their recommendation. I think that's what you need to do today do, or tonight. Maybe. Do we also need to have it come through our legislative committee, Mr. Sladen? It's up to you. I mean, if, you, if the board's yeah. comfortable, you yeah. don't have to. And, and we also need to address, probably the Planning Commission does when they come back with this as a recommendation, uh, anything that is up to five megawatts. Ours really doesn't address that part, so we uh, less than five megawatts. You uh, could need to look at that. So. Yeah, you could actually refer the three specific things to planning commission, and also ask them if they have any other recommendations. You know, they study this pretty thoroughly, but you might give them an opportunity to make a recommendation to you that would help you. And I don't think it has to go to the committee unless you want it to, okay. Mr. Ball. But All I think right, the so biggest thing we want to kind of get where the board feels on this. We, we, the planning commission don't want to be the sole decision maker of this thing because, you know, I think the planning commission appreciates y'all backing them up of what we've done so far and all and all. But I just kind of want to get the feel of the board how they feel about this, and mm -hmm. then and, and then if that's what it's okay, then I think we'll maybe potentially make that motion. And I know you know this, Mr. Brankley, but the planning commission only recommends. So you send this to them, and they'll recommend, and you'll be the ultimate decision maker, but you'll have the benefit of their thoughts and their recommendation when you make those decisions. So, All right, so again, if you want to, there'd be a motion to refer to the Planning Commission for recommendation, these specific changes from the comp plan to the zoning ordinance, and a generic statement that the board would entertain any other recommendations about those transitions that the Planning Commission has. All right, so <laughs> the motion then is we, we will... You know, we'll send this back to the Planning Commission and ask them to, to study it, come forth with their recommendations. And uh, I don't, I think we can skip the committee process. I don't see any, any need for that. So, anyway, so can I get that motion? Yes, sir. I'd like to make that motion that we just All right. All right. So, you've heard that motion in the discussion. Mr. Chairman, I would like to say, and I hope, I know y'all have had some issues before as far as erosion and runoff from these sites also that they discussed that in the same yeah, that, area. Yeah, that, uh, I, th yeah, I think we got that in place now, but they just not, had, we, <laughs> as Robert would tell you, they probably hadn't followed up on them very right. well. Yeah, and I, I just... And know it that might be event. something where we look at limiting as part of the zoning ordinance the amount of area that can be disturbed at a given time right. until it is fully uh, reseeded and growing back. Because uh, while they're meeting, they might be meeting the allowance of the 
ENS laws, um, we've had some projects <coughs> that to this date are still having major issues getting a stand of grass because they took up all the topsoil. Mm -hmm. And now you're down to subsoil. And anyone who's tried to grow grass on subsoil knows it doesn't do very good. Well, this particular, <laughs> this particular one, it was 209 Nothing acres of does. panels in it. We actually cleared over 700 acres. Yeah. And it's, you know, so are there any are there any consequences for these violations? Uh, I mean, are we ha are there any financial consequences or anything? DEQ can find uh, and has it some locations. And DEQ actually has sent out there was a state law change. Uh, we're not adhering to it. The state law sent out requesting whether or not you want DEQ to do all the inspections, everything on these facilities. Uh, Robert and I have discussed it. We're not recommending to you all to change what we have. Uh, with regards to this because DEQ doesn't have enough inspectors as it is. They don't have enough people to, for review of plans, et cetera, to add to that. Uh, plus, then you no longer have any control or say so. You, he still does regular ENS inspections, but no stormwater permits, et cetera. Uh, we're recommending that we keep, and we're planning on keeping everything the way it is currently. Um, while it is a, a, part, a large part of his job, uh, it's something that we feel we need to have local control over. Because of comments y'all have said about it, the ENS issue. Yep. Right. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's yeah. not. Um, it's not only finding on the state level. Uh, the county has the right to initiate a process to revoke a CUP if they're not in compliance. That's a big undertaking. It's an expensive effort, but it certainly does get the attention of the applicant if you say you're going to consider them. So that's an option you have is to threaten revocation. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the big one. All right. Any further discussion? <laughs> all right. All in favor of that motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And we'll get back to you on that uh, time frame with when we'll schedule the next. Any meeting. um um uh, how do I want to phrase this? Any um are we setting ourselves up possibly for some legal challenges on something like this? What's so what? I'm sorry. Any legal challenges on, on, on amend, the, amending this zoning ordinance? Absolutely, positively not. Okay. I, that's what I wanted to hear. That's pretty thorough. Yeah, I want okay. to cover it. That's one of the best answers you've ever given. <laughs> that's right. I, I, I just, he didn't no. even say 99%. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Tied for first. <laughs> and this is. Okay. Here. All right. Um, so, uh, the... Um, we discussed, uh, well, maybe the last couple of months about uh, an alternate for the uh, Virginia's Growth Alliance. Hmm. Um, Mr. Tanner has informed me that if no one else, <laughs> nobody willing, else will do it, if I nobody else it. is willing to step up, he would he would be glad to step up and serve as the alternate. It's just an alternate. Uh, yeah, Move to appoint yeah. Mr. Tanner as an alternate <laughs> on the Virginia Growth Alliance, but, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, motion, motion to appoint Mr. Tanner as an <laughs> alternate to the Virginia Growth Alliance. Nobody All in favor? I'm not letting this get away. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. I figured you, I was going to give everybody else the opportunity. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so also in your packet, you have the uh, Roanoke River Service Authority minutes for uh, their last three or four meetings. That's for informational purposes. Same with the uh, Lake Country Airport Commission. Um, their minutes and treasurer's report for informational purposes. You have the consent calendar. Um, if there are no questions concerning the consent calendar, we need a motion to adopt the consent calendar as presented. A motion to adopt the consent calendar as presented. And you've heard that motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Opioid settlement, Mr. Slayton. Um, yes, sir. You have a resolution before you. As you know, the opioid class action litigation has been going on for some time, and it will continue to do so. But this resolution um, brings before you a request that you approve a proposed settlement with four companies which either manufacture or distribute the opioids and have been in the settlement process, apparently, determined to be liable for their actions. Uh, you'll see that the amount is pretty exciting, $26 billion, um, but that's watered down considerably. Um, it's really about $24 billion, not $26 start there, but then it's divided up uh, throughout the country among all the states and participants. 
then that determines their Virginia share, and then the Virginia share is divided up uh, between the opioid authority, the state of Virginia, and the localities, one of which is Mecklenburg. Then that's divided up <coughs> among the localities. So it, and there's a considerable diminution in the amount you might expect when you see 26 billion. However, it's, uh, it's gonna be a significant sum of money. If this settlement is approved and goes through, and it has to be approved by court, then you would expect to get your first distribution payment July 1, 2022. And the way it's structured, I, I know we wish this were quicker, but uh, the remaining payments are scheduled to be made over a period of 16 years. <clears throat> there is an incentive in the structure of the settlement uh, for the uh, settling party to make early payment. They have a financial incentive to do that. So the hope is they will do that. The problem, of course, is their uh, financial stability given the huge sum of money they've got to pay. But the recommendation um, uh, made by me as your attorney would be that you adopt this resolution, join with many other communities in Virginia which are approving it so they can move forward. Do we have to do this on a roll call? No, but you couldn't, you can't, but you don't have to. All right, so uh, we need a motion then to adopt this uh, opioid settlement resolution that Someone you have before you. All right, we have a motion to adopt. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, that uh, concludes our regular agenda items. We'll go to uh, board member matters. Um, Mr. Tanner, you want to start us off today? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just want to say thank you to Wayne and all his group because they've been working hard uh, with all the COVID challenges and, and uh, everything that's been facing us. I know we're still uh, facing staffing issues, especially at the, the regional jail. Uh, we're working hard on that because I think that's what everybody is facing right now. And the county, you know, I'm sure is always looking for qualified people. Uh, but also, I'd like to thank John Taylor and Chad Neese from the Planning Commission. This uh, emergency operations plan they worked on is a large document, and it takes a lot of work to get it together and um, just to have it ready for us to be able to read over. And I know it was a probably a couple-year process for them to work on it, and I just want to thank them for all their hard work on that. Um, that's really all I've got, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you very much. Ms. Lundy? I don't have too much today, but I'm just proud to see the improvement on the school. I drive by there several, not every, every, not every uh, week, but several times a month. I drive by as close as I can get to it on both roads, and it seems though they come along pretty good. And I just can't wait until they complete it. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Franklin. Well, again, schools all come along good. You know, so many people come up and tell me, say, it ain't no way that school's going up next year. And <laughs> these, uh, Mr. Nichols and the person he brought with him today, I mean, they, I, I'm sticking with the confidence they have. They, they, every time, they never vary to doing that. And, of course, looking forward to that fishing tournament we're having in Clawsville up there. I think that'll be a big event and all. And, uh, you know, one of the roads on that six-year plan, that sweet water thing, I think we ought to invite them up here for a special <laughs> little, you know, party or something. Them, them poor people have been up here for 25 years. I think, you know, on that road, and, and we're going to finish that road that's coming here. So that that's great. Uh, I think the other thing is, and uh, I've talked to several other board members about this a little bit, is about this uh, – what the gentleman got up here again today talked about the tax on these vehicles and stuff. I, I tell you, we're going we gonna to get ram road. I mean, we get I get more phone calls everywhere I go. I'm avoiding going to certain places here lately because of that. <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we just talked about, you know, that collections may be down a little bit because people won't be getting refund checks and stuff like that. And, and now we, we, it's going to actually cost them more on top of that and, and all. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I understand, and I, I really thank Ed and them and what the job do, but it, it's just no way we can do anything else. This is just the only option we got. To We can't leave it like it was from last year or, or the same. Or It's just this is it. I, I, I think I'm pleading and crying and, <laughs> and what I'm just, just like everybody is to me. I mean, you know. <laughs> Because it, it is um, it is another tax yeah, increase we taxing the people. I know. I share your pain, believe I me. Know. And we've gotten a few 
few phone calls. <laughs> um, there are several things that um, uh, several things that have played into this. As an example, this year we've had a substantial number of new vehicles come in. As an example, we've had 813 new vehicles this year that we didn't have last year. So uh, the activity has really expanded this year. That creates a challenge in itself because the code says that we have to be consistent in value annually. So I don't know of a way we can go back and assess at 2020 figures because NATO didn't even have the figures for the newer vehicles. So um, you're talking about 813 vehicles that potentially couldn't even be valued. That wouldn't be consistent or fair with the other taxpayers. Now it was brought up this morning by a gentleman about changing instead of the clean loan value using a lesser fee. The clean loan value is one of the options from NADA that they use. It is not the full retail value. It's between a 20 and 25% discount from the clean retail value or what you would pay at a dealership. So uh, that's not true. It's between a 20 and 25% discount of what we all pay each year. So, um, and we have been at that rate or that percentage long before I came here. So we're trying to be consistent with that. The next lowest option, which would require a public hearing, um, anytime you change something involving the tax methodology, you go to a public hearing. The board would have to approve it. And then you're only looking at about a 5% reduction. So um, we've been a little reluctant to recommend that because we're already 20, 25% discount. So, I don't like it. None. I don't like it. I hate it. Mine is going up with everybody else's. Um, I, I really don't see an option, especially since we have 813 new vehicles that have come on. Yes, sir, Mr. Jones. Ted, I'd like to stress uh, the gentleman that had said the rate had gone up. The rate did not go up. And that is a good point. <coughs> Excellent point. I had to correct several people. They I've said heard I've heard the rates have gone up. I, I've told them, no, the rates have not gone up. The rates are where they've been for years. The board uh, has seen to it, and I have put this in writing to several people. You all... We have the lowest tax rate in Southern Virginia at 336. There are others that have 380 and several that are $5. So you all have done, I think, a yeoman's job in keeping our personal property tax rate low. Now, if we were to reduce the rate, I think you would take you, you, Wayne would really be under the microscope. We'd have to redo the budget because part of this current budget that we've already approved has some anticipated increase in personal property built into it. So um, <coughs> if you reduce the rate, you're looking at a major, major reconsideration for your budget that you all may possibly have to readdress, re-advertise, re-approve, possibly. Um, Sandra and I would have to do a tremendous amount of work to accommodate that process. Not that we mind doing it, no, that's not the point. But this is, a, I hope, to be a one-year anomaly. When chips come out, new car values should come down. When the used car market stabilizes, I think you're going to see values come back. Um, that's my take on it. Um, to add on to what Ed has said, 
Um, to change a rate, you've got to go back to public here and advertise that two weeks, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, it is now the time when the bill's going out. Um, to change anything, you would have to go out, advertise sometime at the end of the year, at the end of this month, um, because you're already now, you couldn't make probably tomorrow's, so you're the following week advertising once, the following week, and then the public hearing, so you're into November. Um, bills are due December 5th. Then you got to get it redone, the book, everything else. So they got to get it to the printers. It has to stay there about five to seven days for them to get this stuff. There's no way we can meet the deadlines. Then unless you move the deadline back. Well, then you're at Christmas. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just going through it. You know, this, this is no way you can really change that because staff doesn't have the authority to go out and change deadlines, tax rates, et cetera. I'll, I'll tell you. One thing Judy came up with, which I think when it was a question of the gentleman who spoke earlier, was what are we going to do with this funding? And it's a question some of y'all have asked me also. Last month when we discussed it, we said we could look at it from the rainy day fund. Well, what you could do instead, because people, some of y'all have looked at me and said, we need to get show taxpayers something for this money. Okay? You've got elementaries that have got to, three of them that either got to be renovated or rebuilt or something. Right. Instead, put it, that in that fund. We did not do the sales tax. Okay, which could have been done, oh, no, uh, which could have been done last year or this year. Uh, use that money as the, the difference. For example, some of our other counties uh, are actually have done the sales tax, uh, but we have not hold off on taking the sales tax to public hearing to after this stabilizes. Use this money as an interim stopgap. It would bring you about half as much, we're guessing, as what the sales tax would bring us based on what staff's been able to figure out. And that way, you'll have some money in two years set aside for the elementary schools to start with. And then at that time, look at taking the sales tax to the public. Uh, you know, I've had some of y'all say, well, the sales tax is the, probably the fairest way. I'd say, well, I'd say it might be, but I'd say personal property also. If you don't own any personal property, it's because you don't have a lot of money. I'm going to be honest. If you don't have a car or vehicle of some type, that's because you don't have that disposable income. You're that person on Social Security that's just getting by, okay? You're not buying anything that's going to have much sales tax on it anyhow, so therefore because there's certain things that are exempt in it. So I think it's probably about as fair as we could come up with. We have discussed that. Uh, Sandra, did you want to add something? You were standing here. Well, yeah. Um, just so the board is aware, ever since I've been the treasurer, I've, my office has tried very hard to get tax bills out to the public six weeks prior to them being due so that people would be able to budget and know what they got to pay and mm -hmm. get it back in. And especially now with the mail the way it is, um, you know, we try very hard to give them a six week leadway before the deadline date. So just to make you aware, the data for these bills has already gone to the printer mm -hmm. and Friday, those bills are gonna be mailed out. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of let the horse out the barn at this point. Um, and just want to make you aware of that. that it's not that we can't stop the bills. We can call the printer today and say, do not send those bills out. Mm -mm. But you do need to understand that when you do that, um, and we, we pass it on down a few more weeks and a few more weeks, and few, there's no way that we can expect people to pay these bills December 5th. We would have to change our due date. Um, so... Just give you an idea what we're working with here. The printers have to have this data at least five days before they can get it out. We've already been told that the Postal Service is going to take at least five or more days to get the mail to the people. So you're backing yourself up to where the um, you're Being really cutting away. down on the time that the people yeah. have to prepare and pay the bills. State code says they have to get them 14 days prior to the due date. I, I don't think that that is uh, timely, and so we've always tried to do six weeks, never less than 30 days. So people got to know what they got to pay, make arrangements, and get it back in order not to be penalized for being so, late. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like to me if we try to do anything, it's just going to be chaos. Yes. Which, yeah. Staff thinks so, and yeah. part of our problem is we have a short window. By the time we get, Ed gets his numbers, 
gets it start put, compiling into the book and we can see this yes. to the time frame it goes out. It's You're basically looking at 30 days. That's okay. Right. At that point in time. And then because of the mail, et cetera, I mean, if you were to post, we've never done this. If you postponed your due date, then you come up with other issues. You're getting clo either close to Christmas or right after Christmas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Or your January or February, well, then it got bills again in, December, in June. So then it's like, my God, you tax me now and you got it again. So you know, the reason by the six months was it gave people long enough time to have some money. True. There's no good answer here, we will tell you. But one thing y'all could look at is doing is setting this funds up, the additional money above what was budgeted for personal property on cars, vehicles, boats, et cetera, uh, to the new elementary schools. And I think that then shows the public something. I think that was one of y'all's concerns of some of y'all talking to me was, What's the public going to get for this? I believe that's what the gentleman asked earlier today. Okay, have a project instead of just a rainy day. Okay, here's your project. Because you know elementary schools are next. Yeah. We've already said that. That's the next big project we've got to do for uh, yeah. building. But what you're doing by doing this is you're actually probably lessening the tax burden on the citizen by 50% than if you would taken the 1% sales tax to them. Because we're estimating about half the funds coming in. Correct. Well, it is kind of, like I say, it pushes us all in a corner, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit here. So, And it looks like it's obvious that we've looked at everything that we possibly could to try to do this thing. But if it's, we're hoping this is not going to last long. And, and is it so, you know, the, the thing you always get a statement is, well, once you go up, you don't never come back down. You know, you're going to hear that. And, but maybe for the next year's, if we can get out ahead of this and look at it a little bit, you know, earlier, because I think it kind of caught us all a little bit, and maybe we can do some about it before another budget or something, maybe have a little more time, maybe. <coughs> and that's a good point. We had a conference call. The Commissioner's Association had a conference call with NADA, and NADA told us that things, they think that things are beginning to turn literally now slowly but beginning to turn they're seeing some improvement on chips um, there were several manufacturers they shut down production plants for two weeks several weeks ago Ford and GM and I mean when you shut down an F-150 plant that makes the most popular pickup truck that Ford has ever made the same thing with the Silverados with Chevrolet uh, that's not good but NATO is saying that the chip situation seems to be improving a little bit. And when that happens, then they'll be able to insert the chips. The truck, many times, many of these trucks and cars are already made. They just don't have the chips to put in them. Hmm. Yeah. You know? So... Uh, what are they going to do when they have an inventory of 2021 trucks with no chips and they're building 2022 trucks? <laughs> Good question. Then you're going to have a crash in Vegas <coughs> for a property of new vehicles. Good deal. And you know, as bad as that get sounds, a good deal on a truck. <laughs> as bad as that sounds, you could very well be right. Uh, where we've seen extravagant increases, we can also see significant decreases. Right, exactly. And, you know, uh, that's good and bad. But well, we try to keep the rate even yeah, for our personal rates, property. We've had one increase that I can remember in probably 20 plus years. When did everybody else go up? Because about 15 years ago, we were one of the highest. On over the property. last several years, they've been bumping it up over the last five years or so. We have not. We've we haven't. I would say 15 years ago, we were about the highest. Mm, we, we were close. Yeah. We were and close. But we've had one increase in 17 years. I've been county administrator. 10 I can't even remember. The and that was a number of years ago. So, I mean, that's it. It stayed steady the entire time, whereas others have increased well above us. So we've held that rate. At some point, you know, there's this fluctuation. We had, we had anticipated some increase when we prepared the budget. Not as much as we got, but then again, you're always running a couple months behind because NADA's giving you July 1, but it takes them a couple months to do it. So he doesn't even get that till August, September. That's how we're plugging all this in. That's why it takes so long. And nothing's immediate. So when will you get the information for the June tax cycle? For next year. For next year? 
Well, it could very well be. Uh, it could be July or August before we get the firm rates NATO. Apply that you, you've got now. Will they apply for the June billing of next July? Okay. July one okay. figure. So it won't change again until next August. No, sir. Right. That's and right. we ought to know more. We'll be able to hopefully see by trend by then. Well, we should keep our finger on the pulse. Then, if Absolutely. we are going to adjust, we need. We certainly shouldn't do it now because of the time frame. I completely I understand that. Get that for y'all. What y'all got to do and everything, but. We need to revisit this in August next year. If it's this again, then maybe we can do something then. Well, I would well, just say, I would just say, you, you you can't mess if you mess with the rate and you drop it. Then when you go up, everybody's going to think you you've gone up on everything. Well, yes, now, even though you they won't remember that you dropped it. <laughs> so if we're already one of the lowest counties around, you know, let's just stay what we got. You know, we we'll are, take we a look sell, at that. We can sell the that because we, we are one of the lowest counties. Rates. Make a decision, yes or no, on it. And we'll try to take a look early as part of the budget as what is trending. But you know, like I said, we're doing a budget in March and April based upon a June figure that we don't get until August. So <laughs> and that's I mean, a good I, point. I mean, I'm trying to, to Rod state Sterling this. couldn't have said that, by the way. That's like throwing a dark blind. Colleen <laughs> is right. Sandra and I are giving him numbers in February and March. I mean, that's what I'm basing this on. He's looking at trends, and I'm going, okay, well, I think with him we should be okay. And, he's, and, and Ed's conservative, and he's going, well, Wayne, you know, I've got this, and I'm going, well, it's moving this way, so we might can tweak it a little bit more this way and push it just a little bit farther out. But we're literally taking a February number in May for an August time frame, and I don't know how else to do that. We, it's, it's a guess. you got a pretty good crystal ball. All right. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Sandra. Well, I certainly appreciate what Ed and Sandra sure. does. I mean, it, it just, oh, yeah, thank you so a lot. Yeah. yeah. I think all the board feels exactly like you, Mr. Yeah. Franklin. And they've done a bunch of research on this also. I want to thank them for all their help. Y'all called, and we have tried to get you some answers. Right. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Franklin? If I got any more time, I'll give it to Buster Hargrave. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jones, you want to go next? Well, I just like to. I still have just you know we're always concerned about whether the schools will be completed in time, and uh, they keep a reassurance of that. I am concerned about the buses. I mean, you know, the buses that are going to the middle schools now, and then c coming back and picking up, uh, picking up the elementary school students, and they start driving all the way down to the four. You know, I don't know. Can they make two runs? Uh, you know, we're going to need more bus drivers. Any way we look at it. I would think. Got plenty of buses, but uh, I am concerned about that. And uh, kudos to the Planning Commission. That I know they don't get a lot of credit, uh, but when uh, when uh, they get the talking and, and, and working things out for it, 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 it helps us. It really takes a lot off of us when they've done all the uh, background work like that, and it's uh, very important to this board. That's it. Mr. Wilkins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Most of what I was going to talk about has been covered as usual. But um, <laughs> you can go first. Though. Yeah, I like going <laughs> first. <laughs> uh, raise your hand. Yeah, I know. Be I know. Yeah, for sure. Um, but again, I, you know, I'm pretty sure the choir again about this tax rate deal. Um, as far as our functioning as a board and to, to the taxpayers, we have not changed anything. Um, if this is all a product of the pandemic, this is, you know, I'm not going to say it's very simple, but you know, had a few calls that didn't really understand it. It was a good letter, perfectly done. Um, but as far as the functionality of this board and the Mecklenburg citizens, we have, you know, kept it the same as low as anywhere. And that's something a lot of people don't realize how lucky we are to be able to do that. So um, kudos to this board and hopefully the citizens can understand what really happened here. Um, and finally, the, uh, the impact mission camps, the first ones that spoke, I, I think that's a, a really – phenomenal group uh, mission, what they have. And, um, you know, I think we should support it in any way that we that we can work it out. Um, Cause this is the first time in 27 years, you said, about actually having an opportunity to service our people. Um, right. And um, anyway, I was just, hopefully we can be a part of that. So that's all I had. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Hargrove, yes, you've been a lot of extra time, but- uh, Thank you so very much. <laughs> uh, and I do, <laughs> Appreciate Mr. Branken giving me your extra time. Uh, and I see that the Rustic Road is doing very well. And Good. so next year you will see me. But I can't understand why you tell me.
to don't sit nothing and just look good. So I think I'm just going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it took 10 years. <laughs> years. 10 years. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not going to be long here. I, you know, I do want to t uh, touch base uh, with uh, and thank David on what the Planning Commission does and what he's uh, brought to the table as far as soul and all. I know it's kind of been a tough job. Uh, you know, and people don't realize when you produce energy, you impact the environment. You do. It doesn't make any difference how you produce it. You're going to impact the environment. And people get caught up in this green energy, and I'm not so sure that uh, it's uh, it's the best thing going out there. But anyway, there are a lot of people behind it, and that's the way it is. And uh, David, just keep your finger on the pulse and, and uh, keep us informed of what's going on with the planning. And uh, certainly look forward to y'all's recommendation. As far as the taxes on the on the personal property and everything, I, I, I can't thank Ed and, and Sandra enough and the work that y'all's office does. But you know, the bottom line is we get we got constituents out here that kind of balk at us a little bit about things like this. And and it was an economic situation that set itself up that caused all this. Um, people need to understand that. Uh, but the bottom line is it's two and a half million dollar tax increase in the county that we didn't approve. Uh, I don't know who did approve it. Y'all certainly didn't approve it, but the, the situation that existed approved it, and uh, that's that's the bottom line, and that's what people look at. That tax tax bill goes up, and what are y'all doing extra for us? Uh, I realize, Wayne, you talk about maybe you're marking this money and that kind of thing. Uh, um, some some people don't see it exactly like that, and they're the people we got to answer to. So anyway, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Spain. Thank you. To the board, you look mighty nice today. I wonder <laughs> who's going to preach. Acting <laughs> <I get> nice. <laughs> yeah, Let's time. keep it legal. My mother's over here. That look good. Uh, glad we uh, throw that letter, Mr. Brankler, concerning the zoning and the comprehensive plan. I don't see the solar farm going away no time soon. So guidelines are very important as we speak at the board. So. I think that's good that you brought it up and I'm going to give it back to you to, to carry back and, and work on it. And uh, yeah, tax is issue. Good that we're going to look at tax rate and keep looking at it. What can we do best for the citizen? And a bunch of things said, we have low tax rates. Uh, Mr. Brankel, I did meet with this Ms. Reyes, that Judy read her, her statement. Is that something we can we'll consider or go into a committee or? Well, uh, yeah, she, 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 uh, she did request money. That's something we would consider. Or? Well, when it, when it came to my board member thing, I was, I was going to uh, ask if we could do the send the Impact Mecklenburg and the Literacy Interactive, send both of those projects to budget committee to see about doing some funding <coughs> uh, for those, Mr. Spain. If you, you all could study that and see. If, uh, I think they're both very worthy projects and they're Definitely. having a direct impact on the citizens of our county. So I'd like to see us do something there. But so, I, I guess the question I'm going to ask, how, how much impact would it get on economic development? Uh, because this, what she's wanting is off the, off the beaten path, uh, may I say. And uh, so it, it, how would this impact? I mean, how would this growth uh, give re revenue to the county? So tourism it would really affect tourism. Uh -huh. that being right there. More. Um, it'd be something we'd assist with her marketing and growing visitation to it. So it would be in those overall tourism numbers that Tina brings to you. That, re right. those. Yeah. that really helps the towns more than us because if anyone comes and eats meals or stays, stays that's going to have an impact, for example, in Clarksville. Uh, but it's not really going to impact you all from a budgetary standpoint at all. So mm -hmm. Tourism really... It's, 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 it's one of those things that we have, we're very lucky for, mm -hmm. uh, but that side of it really impacts our towns a lot more so than us. We do get sales tax off of when tourists come, but that's 1% uh, added on. The real impact is more in the meals and lodging uh, the towns. Get. Yeah, not many motels in the county. This is not, no, and, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not many. We got one. We got not one many restaurants, across, really. <laughs> <embrace it. laughs> so maybe a budget could take up those two items, maybe bring them back to our November meeting. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. And we can ask her what kind of information she might have with regards to tax revenues or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, 
All right, so well, I was going to talk about the, the, the funding, those two things, so we got that out of the way. Um, and I definitely support that rainy day money going into our capital improvement or, or yeah. school improvement fund of these elementaries. And um, to Mr. Jennings' point about the green energy in these solar facilities, I've, it's, I don't know, how, how do you build a solar facility without using fossil fuel? I don't know how that works, but how do you, um, how do you charge an electric car without using fossil fuel? Right. So right. anyway, you, right, you got to uh, have the backup that's equal to the solar. Mm -hmm. And um, the gas three dollars and nineteen cents yeah. this, this morning in Hartsville, uh, you know, going up again. I mean, what? yep, We're shooting ourselves okay. in the foot. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else have anything on the board member matters? All right. If not, then we need to go into closed session uh, for personnel matters and also for real estate. So I need a motion that we go into closed session. So move, Mr. Chairman. Motion to go into closed session. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. All right, this board is now in closed session. We'll take about a five minute break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. Hey, Brian, no, no, I was now we're energy.
We are in open session. Need a motion to certify the closed session. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion to certify. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okay, so um, that we haven't been online, have we? No. no she no. just put you online. She just put it you back on. <laughs> but don't worry, everything is focused at you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that happens, don't it? <laughs> it does happen. Um, okay, so we're back in open session, and uh, Mr. Spain, personnel, committee. Mr. Chairman, uh, on October 7th, we did talk about our interview for a truck driver, and we recommend to the board to hire Mr. Anthony Williams um, to be the next truck driver for the Lane Field. We talked about the price, the qualification. And that would be a motion. Okay. All right. You've heard that motion in the discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chen, you're head of property committee, so you want to deal uh, with it? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to transfer Boyton Elementary School to the IDA, the property. Okay. We have a motion to transfer the Boyton Elementary to the IDA. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, anything else to come before this board? I think Tina wants y'all on the... Yeah, I was going to say, before you leave, Tina has a presentation. It will not take long. She's very excited. We are to go to the back door. Oh, oh. To the back, back door. Downstairs. Oh, okay. She is All extremely right. Meeting excited. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>